Welcome to the Salty Investors episode number 42. It is Friday, August the 4th, 2023. How are you this week, Tim? Yeah, fairly good yourself. Yeah, you should be. You had a week off last week, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, getting slack now. But yeah, yeah. Uh, what about yourself? What uh, did you get up to? Oh, you know, just same old, same old. You know, living the dream, uh, grinding it out in yep. uh, down here on the Gold Coast. Um, but anyway, let's. Uh, what do you got for us, Tim? What, what's the soul of the week you got for us? Well, last week I went down to the Gold Coast and I was just wondering how that tram system was going. You know, it seems to be doing great, you know, but it, it seems hugely inferior to another transport system called buses. With buses, you don't need huge amounts of tracts of land to be locked up and part of the road to be locked up for the trams. And they've got this ability to not run on a track. So you can have stops wherever <laughs> you feel like it. You can change yeah. routes. Um, so for example, I went to the casino and get back on the tram and had to walk a fucking like kilometre back to the hotel. But there was a bus <laughs> stop I could see fucking outside. So I was like, what the hell? Like they're yeah. making something that's hugely inferior. And who knows where the Gold Coast is going to go? You know, they can't expand it. They can't move the line. You know, like they're stuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. It just seems to be a huge infrastructure spend, you know, that's not going to pay out. Yeah. What do you think? You live down there, so maybe you got some yeah, ideas. Yeah, well, I mean, well, just going through there, it's a pain in the ass because, you know, you have to stop for the trams and it, it, it is, I mean, the traffic's bad enough as it is. I mean, because that's, that used to be the old Gold Coast Highway yep. is what you're talking about. That's what it's on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's still, you know, a lot of traffic, even though the M1's further out and you've got another ring road through Burley. <clears throat> It's it, yeah, it's a real pain in the ass. And I was actually this came up the other day. I forget who I was talking to about this uh, because there's a there's there is a plan to run it further down. You know, I think as far as the airport even. Okay, okay. Um, and there's there's actually a movement in Palm Beach. You know, which is not too far down, which is sort of halfway between where it ends now and okay. and um, the airport. Uh -huh. And there's a petition to stop it to stop any further development. Um, because uh -huh. they don't want it, which is because if you if you go down somewhere like Palm Beach, you know, there's just high rises going up everywhere and the traffic along there as well. I mean, it's just it's really intense, I mean, especially peak hours. Um, yep. tram, tram will make it a hell of a lot worse. Uh yeah, I mean, look, you could spend the money spend more money and do it the Japanese way and put it all underground. Yes. Um but who's but, got that you know, money? Dig, <laughs> dig, digging tunnels is uh, takes longer. It's more expensive, and of course, we don't want to do that. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Just, it's... Yeah, it just seems a bit inferior. The whole sort of idea it just seems like a someone's got a brilliant idea at council, and you know, come along, and then we're stuck with it for <laughs> thicking twenty years, paying for all this crap that hardly gets any utilization when... at all. So. <laughs> Well, look, look at look at Sydney. You know they they put in trams and they take them out and then they put them back in again. And then you've got a sky rail thing and then they take. I mean, you know, make up your mind. You know, yeah. I don't know. So wouldn't fly in the private sector. I'm pretty sure people will think <laughs> that's no. like a, a 20 year payback period on this thing. You'd be like, holy hell, there's no way in the world. Well, oh, you got to buy all this road space and you know, like that's why it's a pub that's why it's a public sector oh. idea, isn't it? Because no one else would do it because it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's get on. Uh, we've got a bit to catch up on last week um, here in Australia. CPI came out still, you know, um, the mm. trimmed mean, which is if you, I mean, if exclude all the volatile stuff, it's still 6% year over year inflation. Um, if you take all the groups, it's, you know, below sort of, um, it's still over five, well over five. Um I suppose uh, the what was it? I mean, the price of stuff at the supermarket isn't going up as much or at all anymore. But it's services that are really uh, mm -hmm. still seeing yep. a lot of inflation. So, um, you know, as this is just from Phil. Phil's still with us uh, until he gets replaced, and this is what Phil said. You know, inflation is still high, too high at six percent, and. You know, their central forecast, which again, you can take with a huge grain of salt, um, is it CPI inflation to continue to climb around three and a quarter percent by the end of 2024. And I just want to remind you that we're in 2023 right now. 
So if you think that interest rates are coming down in a hurry anytime soon, I think you, you know, you're kidding yourself. And we've put up the futures charts before. They're not really pricing in a, mm. a interest rate cut until sort of mid next year. Um, and the only thing that's going to um, accelerate that, uh, you know, closer to, to the, to the current, to, to now is um, if the economy really falls in a hole, um, which it hasn't yet. Um, <clears throat> if you look, you know, if you look at things like employment, but uh, yeah. So, yep. Just, just sort of the old theme inflation's here for a while and interest rates are going to stay up for a while. Yeah. It looks nothing's going to change. It's just can everybody be patient, you know, and wait for the, mm. yeah. <laughs> or some catastrophe happens and they've got to cut bad, which, isn't good as well. Like that means something yeah. hugely bad has happened and they've had yeah. to cut to, you know, stop the bleeding. Yeah. Like, so there, there is, there's no uh, wonderful scenario here, but the market is kind yes. of acting like it at the moment. Um, this came out yesterday, I think <clears throat> quarterly retail. So I think we got retail sales. We got last week, last Thursday, the, the month over month, but this is the quarterly one. So now you've got, Three quarters. The last time this came out, remember we said retail recession, mm-hmm. um, and it's still going. Three quarters of negative retail sales, which is doesn't happen very often, no. but it tells you that you know the interest rate cuts have had an effect. Uh, but again, if you look at retail stocks, it seems to be they're looking through and saying, okay, this is about as bad as it gets, and um, mm-hmm. uh, off to the races. Baby Bunting came out this week with an announcement. It wasn't a good announcement, but it just the decline, the profit warning that they gave, um, it seems that it hasn't got any worse, uh, that their that their sales were, were down about 9% year over year, and they're, they're still down about 9% year over year. Oh, great. Uh, it. So <laughs> it's, not, it's not great news, but of course the market took it as, you know, if the market's priced that in and then priced in, oh, it's going to get worse, then anything that's not worse uh yep look, sounded like a positive so again you know i i thought we'd get another wave down you know another washout before um but i guess we, we get, we're going to find out this month because everybody's got to report this month and we'll see what they say um they could be optimistic as well so you know i don't know it's not as bad yeah. as they thought so yeah well, yeah, and and so they came. They, I think they they said that their net profit was going to be between thirteen and fifteen million, and they and they said it's going to be fourteen and a half. So it was the top end of the range. But I mean, it's pretty. You can set whatever range you want. Uh, remember, they set this range in June, yeah, with you know three weeks left to go in the financial year. So it's not exactly a, um, you know, magnificent prognostication. So you know, if you can, it's that old earnings expectations game you can set the earnings expectations and then beat them um yeah you look you look like a genius anyway Mm -hmm. um that's the retail sales oh i thought you know big news out of the u.s this week fitch downgrades the u.s credit rating um now they said they expect the united states expected fiscal deterioration over the next three years um high and growing government debt burden, erosion of governments relative to peers. You know, none of this is new. It's been going on for about 40 years. Um, In Fitch's view, there's been a steady deterioration in standards of governance over the last 20 years. So that just means, you know, successive governments, doesn't matter which side of the aisle they're on, just Mm -hmm. spend like drunken sailors. Um, And, uh, you know, they keep pushing up the debt limit. The, the funniest thing was that Jan- Janet Yellen and a bunch of people sort of said, this is strange. What are they doing this for? It's this downgrade is arbitrary. And I mean, I think it's just about time, about time someone downgraded. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. The idea of, uh, I mean, even the Republicans now don't even really talk about, no. you know, fiscal Balance, rectitude at all. I mean, balancing the budget. I mean, that's, a, <laughs> oh, you need okay. to do that. You know, and you know, like Yellen, Yellen, I think she said, Oh, you know, the US treasuries are still, you know, the safe haven asset. And I mm. said, And I think, well, they are until they aren't, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, right up to the point when they're not. And then, you know, you look like an idiot. So I, I, I just, I thought it was like, Yeah, about time. Oh, um, her, her comments saying, Oh, basically, it's based on past information. So I was thinking, Yeah. So it was right in the past. 
you know, this downgrade <laughs> would is appropriate in the past. <laughs> yeah. It's just not now. Yeah. It's like, oh, sh- yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, she said, I think it was data up to 2020. It was like, oh, yeah, so <laughs> it should have been three years ago that they downgraded this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that's what you're saying? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's nothing to really worry about, I don't think. But, you know, because you look at all the other AAA countries and they're all, you know, Europe and like oh, Australia man, is sort I, of AAA. I don't know how that's possible, but like, yeah, yeah. Just based on mining. So I don't know. Yeah. I have to wait and see. But yeah, no. hmm. Moody's still yeah. has got AAA. So if they, they deground, downgrade as well, well, then, you know, it might be something to talk about. But. Hmm. Yeah, I, I I just thought Yellen, you know, doth protest too much, you know. It's like, well, if it doesn't really, if you don't really think, if they think their analysis is off, then why are you complaining about it so much? There's two other rating agencies out there, that major rating agencies, and oh, maybe there's, uh, you sound a little bit fragile there, Janet. Anyway, <laughs> she would say that anyway. She's the Treasury Secretary, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they, everyone complains that the, you know, credit agencies aren't independent enough and then they go and do yeah. something independent and everyone's like, oh, no, you can't do that. Like, <laughs> Yeah. They did downgrade well, depend- Lehman, you know, 24 yeah. hours before, you know, <laughs> really went to the force. Well, that's so. the, yeah. it, it would have been nice if they showed a little bit of independence during the financial crisis. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so, I mean, I don't have any faith in any of these institutions. U.S. Yeah. government, Fitch, uh, Janet Yellen. No. Is, yeah. It was a little bit funny. Um, so let's get on to Haitian flavoring food. Come on then. Yeah, Haitian um, food. Yeah, yeah. So at the moment, like everyone's going nuts in the US, I think, you know, like when the risk free rate is so low. Um, mm. I don't know why everyone's sort of piling into risk assets. So I'm trying to look elsewhere and everyone really hates China, you know. Um, like, but yep. if you look out 10 years, I think their GDP will be higher than where it is now. Um, Chinese people seem to be like soy sauce and all their herbs and spices. And this company basically was formed in the nineties, about 35 different condiment companies were joined together into one. Um, yeah. so that's about, I'm trying to say it, it's for Shan Haitian. I think that's how you say it in Chinese, but, um, it's the largest soy sauce manufacturer in the world. You know, there's a couple of, there's another Chinese one and obviously there's the big Japanese one, but these are the biggest. Um, currently, it's down 30% over the last 12 months, um, right. mainly on the story that China's uninvestable. But there's another sideline going on here. Um, low IQ Chinese social media are comparing soy sauce sold in China with premium soy sauce sold overseas. Right. So the current narrative is they export the good natural stuff and sell the low quality version, you know, with additives locally. Yep. Right. And, you know, this is a total beat up because they sell the premium natural version in China as well. But, right. you know, idiots, you know, think this is going to destroy the whole brand. Um, if you think <laughs> this is a short lived, you know, it might be an opportunity. Um, mm. Salad oil type, you know, situation, you know, or Chipotle getting you know, E. coli in their salad sort of thing. So don't know, you know, too much about it, but I think it does seem a bit of a beat up. Like we've got low quality versions, like in Australia, we send high quality fruit overseas and, you know, we eat the lower quality stuff here. It's just, you know, it's good pricing. Um, well, I think, you know, Australia is, uh, it, it has an abundance of low quality stuff. If you just look around, <laughs> in multiple we specialize areas. in low quality. Yeah. <laughs> multiple areas. Oh, yeah. It's our bread and butter. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to pay high quality for, you know, high, high dollar for anything. So yeah. Um, so if we look at the fundamentals, the shares outstanding aren't going anywhere. So there's no buybacks, but no real dilution. PE is fairly high, but you know, it's currently great historically price yeah. to Free cash flow is fairly good, but it's high. <laughs> like, um, but this is what interests me: is the return on vested capital is high, but it's sustainably yep. high over multiple, multiple years, which is obviously the thing that I'm looking for. I'm looking for stability. You like, can yep. you be good for a long period of time? Um, gross margins are okay. Up margin, up margins are you know fantastic. 
There's a yep. small dividend, um, great interest coverage, like every, you know, Chinese yep. type company. You know, you're not going to worry about it here when you flip over to the, the balance sheet. Um, you can sort of see that, you know, there's tons of cash <laughs> and free cash flow. You know, it's back to pre pre pandemic levels. Um, yep. There's nothing to worry about here. Like you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat because of this company. But um, so yeah, what are they sort of doing? You know, like they got it's like it feels a little bit Japanese to me. You know, they got this huge positive balance sheet and they're hoarding all this cash. Yep. But you know, yep. they're doing dividends. But surely they should be doing some buybacks here or you know buy another couple of companies, um, mm. especially when they everything's down so low. Um, China doesn't really have recessions, but by Western standards, but clearly they're in a downturn since COVID. They still haven't come yeah. out of that. It's basically a recession in China. Um, yeah. And I don't want to be too racist, but they work hard. Um, and their recovery, I think, will happen fairly soon. Um, I think they're mm. on the front end of it while we're possibly going into a recession. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. the current the current crop price is about forty six yuan, um, mm-hmm. and if the price to free cash flow falls to historic lows below thirty, which will require about a twenty five percent drop in the price, assuming the free cash flow stays stable, about a thirty four yuan would be interesting. But yeah. you know, it's all a bit up in the air. Like it's a bit hard to invest in in China. I know you've got some. <laughs> <laughs> a few little headwinds like Taiwan and, you know, the hate it. But it seems to be settling down a little bit now. I don't see so much mm. aggravation. Um, so maybe we've hit the bottom of it and some of the higher quality companies might be worth a look at. But yeah, what do you look I at just, now? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, just, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, you said that, GDP will be higher in 10 years, um, probably, but they are, according to some, their population is already in decline. Oh, yeah. Like, already in decline. Um, so that's going to be a drag in the same. I mean, th- this is the thing about, you know, people look at what's happened in the last decade or two decades and say, yeah, China's just going to keep going and overtake America. China's going to become the new Japan at some point. Yes. Yeah. You know? In terms of the, de- the the way the demographics are going to work against it, um, but I mean, yeah, I can't see soy sauce not being in demand. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and all those Chinese who immigrate to other places, they do yeah. really well. Like they work yeah. hard and they you know, earn good money. I hardly see any of them that are homeless. You know, like so. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know they've got high incomes, um, and they will go for more of the premium type brands and things like that so i don't so yes you are you have got that negative demographic type thing but i think that's you know like everything it takes longer than everybody (laughs) anticipates so it could be 20 years out it'll turn into japan um but like where do you go at the moment this is the key thing i keep asking people like you can go into small caps in the us that's actually not too bad at the moment yeah but when i keep looking at those names i can't really you know (laughs) Pick anything that you know that I that I can hold and go. Oh well, I'm going to hold this for ten years. These guys are really going to win some SaaS type thing, and you know, like it's just very hard to yeah, predict. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. 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 Well, there you have it, fellas. Uh, don't say uh, Tim doesn't bring you something different. Uh, have a look at uh, Foshan Haitian flavoring and food. Good one, Tim. Um, that will do us for this week. And we will see you next time.